Hey Savvy Devs, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be talking about how to set up a static IP address in Linux. And also we'll be talking about some of the terminology used when creating and working with the network configuration and networking in general. So if you're new and stopping by the channel today, make sure to subscribe below and like the video for more talks and tutorials in the future. Also make sure to let us know how we can improve these videos. So I have Ubuntu 19 running here in the background and this is what we'll use today to set up a static IP address on. And by default, Ubuntu and most other Linux distributions will assign an IP address dynamically using a DHCP server. A DHCP server is a network server that automatically provides and assigns IP addresses for devices on a network. What we'll do is show you how to set up the static IP address through a terminal, which is the command line interface here in Linux. So first thing we'll have to do is find out what the network interface is that we would like to set up a static IP address on. For this video, let's go ahead and just use the first available ethernet adapter. Let's go ahead and start a terminal up. So if I just search for terminal here, I should be able to get this and on most Linux distributions, you'll be able to do this as well. I'll make sure you can see this a little better. So let me change the size here, increase it a little bit more, more, here we go. I think that's plenty big here. So you can find your available network adapters using the if config command in terminal. So go ahead, type it in if config and press enter. And if it's not found here, it does tell you how to install it. So install the net tools. Ubuntu doesn't come with this tool standard anymore. So we'll have to do this sudo apt space install space net dash tools. If we hit enter and put our administrative password in, we'll go ahead and download that package real quick. Let me exit out of this find here, didn't realize that. So if we type in ifconfig again, now we see that we have some output here. Well, let me clear this out and plug in my network real quick. Give me one moment. So now if I do ifconfig, while well, I'm plugged up properly, you'll see that I get a IP address assigned to my network adapter. You can see that we have two different types of adapters here. We have the ENP0S3 adapter available to us and this low adapter, which is just a loop back for the local host. So 127.0.0.1 just means the local computer here. And back up here, this ethernet adapter is the, really the one we care about. Uh, on a side note here, the naming convention from previous versions of Ubuntu has changed, where now the new connection, EN here, EN, tells us that it's an ethernet interface, P1, or P0 as it is here, tells us the bus number, so it's bus zero, and S3 tells us the slot it's currently in, so slot three. So this is an ethernet device on bus zero, slot three. It's nice to know if you ever need to figure out which adapter that you're trying to assign a static IP address, you wanna make sure that you are picking the correct adapter. So since I want to make a static IP address, and what I'll do is actually make it uh, the next one up. Let's make sure that there's the IP address available on our network and we can simply do that by using ping. So if I type in ping 192.168.86.63, you can see that I'm pinging myself right now, but let's try 64 and you can see that 64 does not exist on the network. It says that the destination host is unreachable. Uh, you can simply do control C in order to exit out of that terminal command. So again, make note of two things, the I static IP address that you want to use. I'll use 64 instead of 63, and then on what device that you want to install it on. So in my case, I want it on ENP0S3. So make note of those two things. Now, to set up a static IP address through terminal, we're going to use NetPlan, which is a utility that allows us to configure network settings on Linux. NetPlan uses the YAML convention by allowing us to configure a network with a simple YAML file. 
And all that uh, YAML stands for is yet another markup language, which is kind of funny. It's a serialization language that is most often used with uh, configuration files. And it basically is just a agreed upon communication format for communicating between various programs. So let's go ahead and change directories to the netplan directory. So if we do CD space backslash here in Etsy and uh, netplan, we'll switch directories to netplan. Inside this directory, we should be able to find a file that starts with 01. So if I do ls space dash al, this allows me to list all of the files located in the directory. And as you can see, we do have two files here. Uh, one that's uh, 01 dash netconfig.yaml and then the second one which is 01 dash network dash manager dash all. So usually it's uh, one of these available yaml files that we want to go ahead and edit. If there's no file that exists you can always create one using a text editor such as nano. I'm going to just uh, nano and edit one of these files instead. So I'm going to use nano in order to edit the file. I'll make sure to use a sudo before that command in order to use it as a super user. So if we do sudo space nano, and then we type in the 01 netconfig.yaml file, you can also use tabs in order to automatically fill that in for you. Go ahead and press enter to open the file up. As you can see, there are already a few things in here. It says that there's a network version two, and it has a renderer property here. And what the renderer property tells us is, uh, really tells NetPlan which network manager will manage the devices that are currently connected to this Linux box. So here, network uh, D is what manages those devices. Then it tells us our various ethernets here. It does have the ENP0S3 already in here, and that's exactly the one we want to edit and use. As you can see here, it's set up for DHCP4 as yes. In order to make it static, we'll have to set this to no instead. So let's go ahead and make that edit real quick. So simply change that to no. And then underneath this, we can go ahead and add in a static IP address that we want to use. So go ahead and do that by pressing enter. And let's just use spaces here instead of tabs or anything else. Sometimes uh, if you do tabs in the YAML file, you'll actually, you'll mess up the proper formatting here. So spaces are always good to use instead. Um, let's type in addresses with a colon and then a space right after that. We'll do a opening brace here where we're gonna put our IP address in that we want to define as static. So we said 192.168.86 and we said we'd use 64 since that was available. So the last byte there, I'm gonna use 64. One other thing that we can add in here is a backslash here with uh, 24 and then we'll go ahead and close the brace that we had started. So uh, the backslash 24 just tells the network what type of subnet mask that you will be using for this setup. So since there's 24 bits in the subnet mask uh, that we'll be using, which is the 255.255.255.0 network, we can write in the dash, or sorry, the backslash 24 here. A subnet mask is just a quick way for computers to distinguish between the device's network address space and the host address space. Following this, we can add in a gateway if we press enter, and then we'll go ahead and space in again until we got everything lined back up. Let's go ahead and include a gateway. We can do this by doing gateway four, and let's go ahead and put that space in. We can simply put in 192.168. 86.1 here for our gateway. Yours is of course gonna be different, but for this network, that's what we're using as the gateway. This just helps us this just helps us distinguish from how we communicate with devices on different subnets. Let's move on to name servers and the addresses inside of them. So if you want to add a namespace, you can, but this isn't necessarily required. So if we want to use some default name servers here, such as let's use Google's 
uh, for this example, we can go ahead and add that in by doing name servers, colon. We'll start another line here, and then we'll do spaces until we are flush with the name servers again. Let's add uh, four more here, so that way you're starting up lined up with the S. Just some indentation here, so we keep following that indentation and everything looks right. We'll put addresses, and now go ahead and close. Go ahead and put your opening bracket, and now you can define the name server addresses. So for Google's DNS, we can use 8.8.8.8. .8 and then the second or secondary name server, we can use 8.8.4.4. .4. Again, for Google, we'll close this off with a bracket again. So this is just a server that helps transition no name names into IP addresses. Uh, for example, this again is uh, google.com's DNS, and it just serves as a place to look up domain names on. In here, we can also set up a Wi-Fi access point with a static IP address as well, since this is a physical Ethernet adapter with a physical cord plugged into it. I'm not going to show that, but I will add it to the description below. I'll go ahead and add uh, this entire file layout in the description below if you want to check it out and be able to kind of copy it and then make edits to the addresses, gateways, and name servers yourself. But this should be good enough for us right now. Let's go ahead and make a save. We can do that by doing the Shift X key or the Shift O key to write out the file. Go ahead and hit Escape and then Shift O here. And it's asking you a file name to write to, the one that's already there, the 01 netconfigyaml that we're editing is fine. So go ahead and just hit enter. And it told you that it wrote the 12 lines out. In order to exit, we'll do shift X. And let's just make sure that the file did save the way we wanted it to. We'll go back into it. And as you can see here, it does have all the information that we put in. So again, I'm just gonna exit out here. Now that we're exited out, and the file is saved, we'll go ahead and test the new network configuration file by doing sudo space netplan, and then we can do try right behind that. So it realized that there is a new network configuration and whether or not we want to save it, we can go ahead and press enter and it says that the configuration has been accepted. And if I do if config, we can see that my IP address changed. Although it wasn't given to me by a DHCP server this time, instead it's been forced through the network file that we changed. And one note, in the YAML file, you must adhere to uh, the correct code indentation for each line of the block. So in other words, the prefix of the number of spaces for each line is important. Otherwise, you may end up with an error message um, I'll go ahead and put that error message in the description below so you can kind of see if you made a mistake, you would actually get that error instead of um, it allowing you to accept that configuration if it was incorrect. It's just something nice to know and keep in mind. Um, it's very useful for troubleshooting. There's also another way that you can apply the network change. So you can also do sudo netplan apply if there are changes. And if everything goes out smoothly, this will actually not tell you anything. If something's wrong with the configuration file, it will spit out a message to you. So again, if we do the ifconfig command, we see that our IP address is static, that the net mask is set, and the ethernet adapter that we were talking about before, the ENP0S3, is now statically defined. Of course, there is a better way of doing this. Instead of statically defining your IP address at the computer, you can also define it at your router instead. This makes more sense because if for some reason something else got assigned with this last byte that is 64, you would have an IP conflict because right now the router doesn't really have a notion that you are reserving this IP address statically. For most cases, this is fine, and sometimes it's just what you need to do. But where you can, I would go ahead and statically define my IP address in a router. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and talk about setting up a static IP address for Ubuntu. And this will work in most uh, Linux distributions as well. So let me know what you think about the tutorial. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, feel free to post them in the comments section below. 
Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.